Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and in this video we're going to be talking about the dangers of space. And more specifically, a recent study that discovered something a little bit scary about living in space and living in zero G. Let's talk a little bit more about this and welcome to What The Math. So I think for the most part, most of you that watch this channel probably enjoy space to some extent. And I'm sure many of you, if not all of you, would love to go there one day, even for a day, even maybe for an hour. But even though it's technically still really, really expensive to do and you have to be really qualified to actually become an astronaut, one day, especially if we are successful with privatizing space exploration, it will be possible to do for everyone. But is it worth it? So. In the last few years, especially since the creation of the International Space Station back in the late 90s, our understanding of dangers of space has increased dramatically. Now, if I were to ask you what do you think is the most dangerous thing in space, I think most people would probably say radiation. At least most people I know. And that is true, it is quite high and there's a lot of cosmic radiation that can technically produce a lot of damage in um, human body. That is not the most dangerous thing. As a matter of fact, over the years we've discovered that a lot of things go wrong with the human body when you place it in conditions in zero gravity. And so the paper that was just recently released discovered something else a little bit scary. Something that um, is reported right here and we're going to briefly discuss it in this video. But let's actually summarize all of the dangers of essentially going to International Space Station and staying there for, let's just say, a few days, maybe a month. So some of these dangers begin with your vision. We've discovered over the years that pretty much most of the astronauts report either blurry vision or complete loss of vision at some point. And this most likely has something to do with the fact that gravity is required for our eyes to function correctly. Now this is something that we may never actually overcome and we'll probably just have to find a way to fix vision problems in astronauts if they ever uh, occur on the way to Mars, for example. Because, for example, if suddenly one of the pilots loses his vision in the middle of a Martian mission, this could be pretty dangerous. Now, there are other problems. We've also discovered that due to the lack of gravity, the water content of our lungs begins to actually um, rise, and sometimes quite dramatically. Now, this doesn't mean that one day an astronaut is going to drown in their own liquid by being in space. But the danger of having liquid in your lungs is nevertheless there. It might actually damage the lungs. Although interestingly, even though water was discovered in the lungs of many astronauts, so far what we've realized is that our lungs can adapt to these situations pretty quickly, and all of them function just well. But there is another problem with lungs, and that's related to dust. In zero gravity, unfortunately our lungs have serious problem dealing with dust, specifically the dust that gets inhaled and then deposited inside the lungs. Unfortunately, the absence of gravity allows dust to get deposited much more deeply inside the lungs and makes it really difficult to try to expel it afterwards, which could technically lead to some serious problems, an actual lung disease that could develop within, let's just say, a few months of being in space filled with dusty air that could either come from actual human skin or that could come from objects like Mars and the Moon. The lunar dust specifically could be very, very dangerous to us. It's so fine and so little that it could easily damage the lungs of astronauts living on the Moon. So in that sense, Low gravity or no gravity is pretty bad news for dusty environments. We'll definitely have to come up with technologies that will allow us to clean the air very efficiently, allowing no dust to remain in it. And being in space also leads to other problems, of course, such as muscle problems, muscle weakness, and various types of vertical and disorientation. But the scariest problem is the one that was just discovered. And that problem relates to blood flow. It seems that when the scientists behind this paper investigated 11 astronauts, they've discovered that six of them had a very serious problem with blood flow, where the blood inside their neck, in the so-called jugular vein, has either stopped completely or even reversed its flow. In other words, the blood was circulating in the opposite direction, which could potentially lead to some serious problems. Now, Nothing has been discovered so far in terms of the actual effects of all of this, 
but hypothetically an astronaut could definitely completely pass out or even die and that is the scary part if the blood flow stops for let's just say 20 seconds or if it starts flowing in reverse for 15 to 20 seconds the astronaut will definitely pass out Oh no though, officially the heart is supposed to pump blood in one direction, it seems that the effects of the blood flow depend directly on the gravity. They do depend on having this force pulling on the blood channels and allowing them to uh, create the flow in one direction. And if this problem persists, it can definitely lead to a serious brain problem including of course the potential uh, brain damage or death. So this discovery is so far one of the most worrisome, one of the scariest about the potential effects of zero G. So does this mean that we need to stop exploring space? Well, no, absolutely not. Quite the opposite as a matter of fact. We have to start doing even more in regards to space exploration so that we can actually discover techniques that will help us prevent all of this from happening. Because this would actually combine the um, various types of health studies and medicine with space exploration, it would also most likely lead to some incredible discoveries in medicine, because that's usually how it works. The uh, discoveries that NASA made in medicine have already improved life here on Earth quite dramatically. For example, you might be already familiar that MRI machines were technically invented by NASA. Back in the 60s, a lot of the technology that, that came from the original space exploration missions didn't just lead to the creation of the ISS, it also led to various types of machines that we use today in medicine. And also when it comes to being in space, it's not actually all bad news. As a matter of fact, there's at least one case when being in space actually saved someone's life. James Irwin, who you can see right here, was one of the astronauts on the Apollo 15 mission that did get to land on the moon, and not just land on it, but also walk around here, collect certain types of rocks from the surface, and then bring them back to Earth. And during the mission, when the rocks were being transferred from the lunar landing module, he actually had a heart attack, or at least something resembling a heart attack, because it seems that in Zero-G, heart attack doesn't really affect humans with the same effects. So the arrhythmia that he had in his heart would have actually killed him if he was on Earth. But because his body was not in Earth's gravity, but instead in zero G, while at the same time receiving a huge amount of oxygen and being constantly monitored, this prevented his heart from completely giving up. The strain on his heart was no longer there, and so he was able to survive this making him technically the first ever person to survive a heart attack in space. Although unfortunately James did eventually pass away here on Earth and was also the youngest uh, lunar explorer to die. He was only 61 when he passed away. And so in that sense, Zero G helped his heart. It saved his heart and his life. Which also suggests that maybe one day we'll find a way to treat people with heart problems by sending them to the zero G conditions in space and having them undergo various treatments there. Maybe this is how we'll solve a lot of problems that are not solvable here on Earth. And so it's actually quite exciting that in the last 20 years we were able to discover so many different things related to health sciences in space and so many different problems that we now have to solve while at the same time discovering things that do improve our life in space. But in order for us to continue the space mission and in order for us to continue exploring and becoming an interstellar species, we definitely have to take our space exploration mission to the next level. And that means mission to the moon, mission to Mars, and possibly mission to other objects as well. Titan, for example. Well, anyway, so on that note, check out the paper I mentioned in the description below and watch out for other videos that will talk about the exploration of space and both dangers and excitement of doing so. In one of the future videos, we'll also discuss some other potential problems with, for example, a mission to the moon and other hazards that we need to watch out for. On that note, I'll see you tomorrow, come back tomorrow to learn something else, subscribe if you still haven't, and share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences. Maybe consider supporting this channel on Patreon because it does help me quite a lot. I'll see you tomorrow, space out, and as always, bye-bye.